Today we will start the second lecture of our topic which we were discussing bioenergetics and the metabolism. As you are familiar under bioenergetics and metabolism, we will uh, trying to cover three basic topics that is the concept of free energy under which we will understand what is a free energy. Then standard free energy change, what kind of changes are happening in any energy change reaction. The lastly, we will see the energy rich compounds and their role in the metabolism. In first lecture, we have discussed the concept of free energy in detail. I am just, just summarizing the con, uh, concept of first lecture for your understanding. As we have already discussed in the previous lecture, what is a free energy? The free energy is basically the energy which is available to do the work or any utilizable energy which we can do use for working. Like we can talk, we can walk, or we can do any task. This is done by the free energy. Changes in the free energy is denoted by delta G, also referred as Gibbs free energy. We will discuss this delta G in little detail. I hope you are now familiar with the free energy. Energy available to do work is called as free energy or utilizable, utilizable energy is called free energy. If there is change in the energy, either energy is increasing or decreasing, energy is uh, consuming, utilizing, or energy is releasing. Totally, this totality of the change in the energy is generated by delta G. This is called as Gibbs free energy. The value of delta G can be positive or it can be negative. If the value of delta G is positive, it is known as androgonic reaction. And if the value of delta G is negative, it is exergonic reaction. Exergonic reaction, as we have discussed in the previous lecture, if energy is released during a reaction, this is called as exergonic reaction. And this energy release is denoted by the negative value. If energy is utilized by the reaction, it is called as Androgonic reaction and the value will be the positive. Okay, energy in any chemical reaction, there are, if we talk about the energy, standard free energy or energy, three important terminologies are here. The first one is free energy, second is enthalpy, and the last is entropy. Now we will try to understand these three different terminologies. First, we Free energy, as we have discussed in detail in the last lecture, free energy is denoted by the G. It is defined as the amount of energy capable of doing work during any kind of reaction at a constant temperature and pressure. The energy which is produced during a, at constant temperature pressure during any reaction is called as free energy, and it is represented by the G. Okay, this energy can be utilized or this energy can be released. Two conditions are there. Free energy, we have seen what is free energy. If the energy is free energy change, that is delta G. If there is any change, like it is releasing or it is utilizing, this change in the free energy is represented by the notation delta G. If delta G has a negative value, then the reaction is called as exergonic it has negative value during a reaction energy is releasing it will have a negative value and this reaction will be called as exergonic the opposite of this means if energy is utilizing this is called as endergonic reaction and utilization of energy in endergonic reaction then the value of delta g will be positive is it clear Utilization of energy or free energy available to do work is called as uh, delta G or Gibbs energy. It can be delta G change in the energy. It can be positive or it can be negative. If the delta G value is positive, it means reaction is releasing the energy. 
and its value is uh, negative. If reaction is utilizing the energy, then its value will be uh, denoted in positive with positive sign. Clear? Now the second terminology is enthalpy. Enthalpy represents the heat content of the reaction system. Uh, heat content, overall heat content of any reaction system is uh, denoted by an, uh, the enthalpy sign H. When there is the release of heat during the reaction, it is referred as exothermic reaction and delta G is negative. Same is the, as the case in delta G. If reaction is releasing the energy, if reaction is releasing the energy, this, this is called as exothermic reaction and it is represented by delta H negative. If reaction is utilizing heat, if reaction system is utilizing heat, it is called as endothermic reaction and the value of delta G will be positive. That, sorry, the del value of delta H will be positive. Delta G, delta H. Delta G, what is that delta G? Change in the free energy. What is delta H? Change in the heat system of overall reaction. Delta G can also be positive and negative. Delta H can also be positive and negative. When system is releasing the energy, value of delta G will be in negative and it is, it, this reaction will call as exergonic. If value of delta G is positive, it means system is uh, utilizing the energy and it is called as endergonic reaction. Same is the case with the enthalpy. If the system is overall releasing heat, value of delta H will be negative and it is called exothermic reaction. If uh, heat is used by the reaction, it is called as uh, endothermic reaction and value of H will be positive. Now the last term that is entropy. It is basically quantitative expression for the randomness or disorder in any system. If there is any disorder or randomness in the whole system it is called as entropy it is denoted by the sign s there is always an increase in entropy in entropy or gain in the entropy of the overall system in any reaction it means that delta s is always in positive there is only increase in the reaction overall the entropy of the reaction system it is always positive so if we Overall, see the Gibbs equation, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, where delta G is change in the free energy, delta H is enthalpy, changing the enthalpy or heat system of the reaction, and delta S is uh, entropy. Is it clear? Okay. This, this was about what is free energy and what, what are the free energy changes in view of uh, this equation. Now the last topic of uh, this chapter that is high energy compounds. These high energy compounds are also known as energy rich compounds. These are the compounds present in a biological system which on hydrolysis will yield the free energy which is equal to or greater than that of minus 7.3 kilocalories per minute. If we talk about the energy released during the breakdown of ATP, as we have discussed in the last slide, if the energy is released, then the value of delta G will be denoted by the negative sign, as here in showing in the ATP uh, breakdown. When there is the breakdown of ATP, energy is released. As energy is releasing, so the value will be denoted in with the negative sign. In case of ATP breakdown, minus 7.3 kilocalories per mole energy is released. Any compound which will give the energy release upon breakdown either equal to or greater than that of negative 7.3 kilocalories per mole, those compounds are known as high energy compounds or energy rich compounds. This negative sign doesn't mean that it is minus 7.3. 7 it is only the diminution, notation, sorry. It is only the 
rotation or representation negative sign is showing that in this thermodynamic system energy is releasing so the compounds which release energy equal to negative 7.3 kilocalories or more than this these are known as energy rich compounds or high energy compounds compounds that yield energy less than that of negative 7.3 kilocalories per mole are called as low energy compounds basically our topic to cover in this uh, chapter is high energy compounds so uh, some important high energy compounds of bi biological system we will discuss in detail most of high energy compounds contain phosphate groups this is the key point if we talk about the high energy compound the phosphate group is always present in that usually except that of acetyl coa it is also acetyl coa is also a high energy compound but without any phosphate group. so if we talk general generally speaking or uh, for general concept any compound which have phosphate group in it that is a high energy compound because upon the breakdown of this uh, phosphate bond high energy is released that is greater than negative 7.3 the bond in the high energy compounds which always yields energy upon the hydrolysis are called as high energy bonds these bonds are notated by the symbol uh, squiggle squiggle this symbol squiggle was first invented by a scientist named perth albert uh, lipman this is just for your information so we what we are discussing high energy compounds the energy rich compounds the compounds which upon breakdown give a lot of energy for the utility these are generally speaking all the phosphate containing compounds in the biological system are high energy compounds if we talk about the classification of high energy compound generally there are five groups for high energy compounds the first one is pyrophosphate second enol phosphates three acyl phosphates four thiol phosphate and five gonadal phosphates or phospho uh, phosphogenes these are basically five uh, phosphate compounds which are present in a biological system uh, for as high energy compounds or energy rich compounds okay what are the nutrients or the diet the categories in which these high energy compounds are present in our diet in carbohydrates in fats and in proteins all the categories of nutrients which we are taking contain these high energy compounds means phosphate group containing compounds whenever there is the catabolism breakdown of these energy rich compounds uh, nutrients the carbohydrates fats and proteins energy uh, will be released energy will be released by the utility of adp nad positive nadph and fad it will be converted into atp nadh nadph fadh2 uh, by the breakdown of these carbohydrates fats and proteins uh, the and products we will have carbon dioxide water and nitrogen 